All right, welcome back. So today we are going to be continuing our conversation about slope and rate of change. And we're going to be talking about what is called the slope formula. And this is going to be actually derived from working with slope on a graph and working from our rate of change if we're looking at a table. And we're going to be talking about why we are able to derive the slope formula, which is going to allow us to find the slope between any two points that are on a line. So without further ado, let's begin. So when it comes to finding the slope, you can find the slope of a line from any two ordered pairs. The ordered pairs can be given to you, or you might need to read them from a table or a graph. So sometimes they're gonna be given to you as two ordered pairs. Sometimes you're gonna be given a graph and you have to look for those two ordered pairs. Sometimes you're gonna be given a table, which means you have to have an X and Y column and then change that into an ordered pair X comma Y. So let's go through a quick example. Let's say we wanna find the slope of the line that contains the coordinate points, negative one comma three and two comma zero. The first thing we need to do is name the ordered pairs. It doesn't matter which is first and which is going to be second. We have to have two ordered pairs in order to calculate the slope. So we're gonna say that negative one comma three is the first ordered pair and two comma zero is the second ordered pair. Remember, slope is the change in y divided by the change in x or the difference in y divided by the difference in x. So by using this, we're gonna label each ordered pair. We let negative one comma three be the first ordered pair. So we're gonna have x sub one comma y sub one. All that means is it's the first x value comma the first y value. The, the x value of the first ordered pair comma the y value of the first ordered pair. Likewise, we set two comma zero to be the second ordered pair. So we're gonna label that x sub two comma y sub two. That stands for the second x value and the second y value, or the x value of the second point comma the y value of the second point. This is gonna allow us to use the slope formula. And we're gonna substitute these ordered pairs into the formula. Now the formula is m is equal to y sub two minus y sub one divided by x sub two minus x sub one. M stands for slope. So if, if we haven't already jotted this down, M stands for slope. So like a mountain slope, it's mountainous. We go up or down a mountain. So now we're gonna find again, the change in Y over the change in X. Well, we let our y sub two be zero. So we substitute y sub two in for zero. We let y sub one be three and we substitute it in for three. Likewise, we let two be our x sub two. We put it in for x sub two. We let negative one be x sub one. So we substitute it in. And we're finding the difference in it. We're finding the change in it. That's why we're gonna be subtracting. We wanna find the change within it. We're not gonna be adding it, right? When we think about the word change, let's put it into a real life perspective here. When you go to the store and you buy something, let's say it's $17 and you give the, the, the cashier $20, what's your change? It's not $37. You're not adding 17 and 20. You're subtracting 20 minus 17 because you pay $20 but it only was $17. So the difference of that is your change. You get $3 back. So we're doing the same idea here, but for our ordered pairs. We're having that second point where we ended minus where we started. Second point where we ended minus where we started. $20 minus 17, not 20 plus 17. We're always gonna be subtracting. And this is a good example because we have in the denominator two minus negative one. We're not gonna be, it's not two plus negative one. It's always subtracting. We're finding the difference in those y values, the difference in the x values. And then we're able to simplify and we get negative one. Therefore, the slope of the line that has the two order pairs that we were working with, negative one comma three and two comma zero is going to be negative one. 
Now to show you why we're able to do this, let's, let's look at a different example. Let's say we're given this graph and we're given, we have two coordinate points, three comma zero and four comma three. And we wanna find the slope. Well, previous to today, we would be counting. We would be seeing how much we go up or down compared to how much we go to the right. So if we wanted to try that out, we're starting at three comma zero, the red point, and we're ending at four comma three, the blue point. Well, we go up one, two, three. So we went up three and right one. Therefore, we know slope is a change in y over the change in x. We went up three and right one. Therefore, our slope is three. But now let's take it and use it for our slope formula. Well, let's say we're starting at the red point and we're ending at the blue point. Let's show what happens. We know our formula is a second y value minus a first y value, the second x value minus the first x value. It's where we ended minus where we start, where we ended minus where we start. Well, we ended at four comma three. So those first values, y sub two is gonna be three, because that's, that's the y value of the second point. And the x value of that second point is four. We now subtract where we started from. We started at three comma zero. So the y value was zero, the x value was three. When we subtract them, we get three over one, which again is also three. So this is why we're able to use this slope formula because we're not always going to be given a graph or a table. We're sometimes just going to be given the ordered pairs and we need to calculate the change from those ordered pairs. And the slope formula allows us to do it. It's a change in y over the change in x. It's where we end with our y minus where we started with our y divided by where we end with our x value minus where we started from. Again, when we think about the word change, we aren't adding those values, we are subtracting. So we subtract those values every single time. Awesome. With that in mind, please work on problems one through three on the guided notes and resume when you're ready to move on. All right, if you listen to my voice, that means you have worked on those first few problems and you're ready to move on to the back of your sheet. So you can also find the slope from an equation by using those x and y intercepts. So let's first go through an example. Let's say we have x minus 3y is equal to negative 9, and we want to find the slope of that line. Well, we know we need two points. Well, what are the two points that we can calculate from an equation like this? Yeah, we can calculate the intercepts. We can find the x-intercept. We can find the y-intercept. So those are going to give two points, 0 comma something and something comma 0, right? Where it crosses over on that x-axis and where it crosses over on the y-axis. Those are going to be two ordered pairs that we can use. Well, we're going to find the x-intercept and we're going to find the y-intercept. When we end up doing the math, we get that the x-intercept is going to be negative 9 and the y-intercept is going to be 3. And we can now write that as an ordered pair. Well, again, if it's the x-intercept, we know that y was equal to 0. So it's negative 9 comma 0. Likewise, for the y-intercept, we know that x was 0 and y was 3. So that's how we derive negative 9 comma 0 and 0 comma 3. And now that we have two ordered pairs, I feel totally confident in, in your ability to use our slope formula, substitute it in, and receive that we end up with 1 over 3 is going to be our slope. Remember, we need to simplify. You have to simplify. Ah, that was a horrible squiggly. Hold on. Try it again. There we go. We have to simplify. Always, always simplify your slope. We ended up with 3 over 9. We simplified that to 1 over 3. So that means the slope of that line is going to be 1 over 3. And we get that from finding the intercepts as our ordered pairs because we need two ordered pairs. Not one, but two ordered pairs. Once we have them, we can substitute it into the slope formula, the change in y divided by the change in x. And then we find our slope. 
Awesome. Well, with that in mind, please work on problems four through nine on the guided notes. Great job today, folks. If you have questions, please jot them down. I'd be more than happy to help you out. You're doing a really, really good job with this so far. I'm really proud of you. Keep up the great work, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks.